Well, hey there. How you doing? Dave Fenoy here. Another Wednesday, another Ask Dave Fenoy Anything. I hope everybody is doing okay. I hope between the last time and this time you have booked something. Uh, actually got to have uh, uh, talk to a few of my students, and it seemed like uh, everybody was kind of booking some stuff now. It made me feel really good. Uh, by the way, all of these Ask Dave Fenoy Anythings live on my YouTube channel, uh, Dave Fenoy VoiceOver Training. If you are interested in voiceover training with me, uh, we're going to go to DaveFenoy.com. Uh, and uh, there's a little tab at the top that says Study VO, uh, and you can do that. And uh, I, I, I'm not going to lie, uh, Tom and I are having a little technical difficulty. He is getting an error message when he clicks on the link to join us that says something about go into his preferences on his Mac and uh, allow the, the camera and the microphone to work with this. Uh, there have only ever been uh, just a few problems. I remember when we had uh, Gerald Griffith on, for some reason we had this horrible feedback that just would not go away. Um, but most of the time, uh, this program, Ecamm Live, works like a charm. So uh, I'm going to see if he can do that, and maybe uh, he'll call in, and we're real casual here. So uh, if he calls, uh, I might take the call, and <laughs> that'll be part of the show. Uh, in the meantime, uh, a couple of reminders. I'm leaving town on this weekend. I'm heading for Barcelona. I'm going to be part of the uh, uh, J. Michael Collins's Euro Retreat. Uh, we'll be staying at a lovely resort outside Barcelona on the ocean. It's going to be fabulous. Uh, private chef there, uh, and I will be teaching a couple of classes, uh, voice acting for video games and TV promos. Uh, and right after that, I will, in the middle of the week, I'll zoom up to London for uh, the Vaughn, uh, voiceover network in London there get your game on I'll be one of the panelists talking about that and it is well let, let me pull that up uh, and whoops and there it is uh, some really great great people there and if I unlock it I can make it bigger so we can actually see there you go uh, whoa let's see uh, we've got uh, Tom Keegan uh, great director, Andrea Toyas, fabulous director, um, and a few other long lists. My buddy Mark Esdale, uh, another director who I quote all the time. Uh, Mark Esdale, uh, once we were having a, you know, one of those uh, beer conversations about voiceover and acting and video games, and and he said, you know, Dave, the mouth speech that's the exhaust of the acting engine everything else happens first and then the exhaust comes out and uh, and you know what he's right he's right you got to get it here and here and here and what that relationship is and what you're reacting to and then it will come out um well, let's see I'm getting a video message from uh, Steve Bailey well Steve Bailey what's going on man Oh, oh, I, uh, I actually have to take my, my guest is, has arrived now. Oh, okay, just go to Dave Fenoy on uh, Facebook, and, but uh, let me jump off now. We're having all kinds of issues here today. Here we go, and there he is, and let me assign him, and uh, just find Dave Fenoy on Facebook, and there I'll be. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say bye now. Uh, oh, bye bye. All right, it's th that kind of day, clearly. Uh, well, you know what? Without further ado, I'm just going to bring him on. Uh, let's uh, bring on Mr. Tom Pinto. There he is. <laughs> when all else fails, use the other Mac in your house. Oh, there you go. There you I mean, go. You know, in, the, in the studio, I was in, I was in I was in my den anyhow, but he walked through and allowed. You know, it, it walked through and said to access. So, anyway, mea culpa, mea culpa. 
Well, you know what? Uh, no mea culpa, because uh, we're living in this technological age where, uh, and somehow I'm not able to, there we go. Uh, we're living in this technological age where we can do some amazing things and sometimes they just don't want to do what they're supposed to do. What are you going to do? But but here you are now, and yes. uh, and the person who was calling me. Okay, Steve, this is very strange. So, so Steve, what's up? Oh, okay. Well, right now, Steve, I can't talk to you about how to do that because I'm doing that. <laughs> we're we're on right now. We're on right now. <laughs> I love you, man. Chief cook, uh, bottle washer, host, and no everything. No worries. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, you got to... Now, you know, when I first started doing this, that would have thrown me. Ah, what are we going to do? Oh, no. But uh, I realize, hey, life goes on. It's a life lesson. Um, sometimes things just aren't going to do it like you're supposed to do it. Didn't you experience that a little bit early on in the pandemic when everybody and their mother's son was starting to use Source Connect? Oh, boy. You know? Yeah. And, and it's like there'd be glitches. And finally, it's like engineers would say, you know, buddy, it's really not you. It's like Source Connect is like clogged. So just go ahead, log off, reboot, and we'll go from there. And depending on which version of Source Connect you had, um, and you know, one of the things about uh, all this technology is, is often, and I know this happens to me sometimes, something goes wrong and your brain uh, just freezes up. Uh, instead of being able to just think clearly and go, well, let me try this and let me try this yeah. and let me try this, um, we get all upset. And I'm, I'm saying this because everybody is going to go through this in a session at some time for some reason. Right. Sometimes it's you. Um, I had been doing some things in my studio. I switched out a microphone, and somehow on the mic I have right now, I accidentally pushed the uh, 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 the 48 voltage, and uh, it was right. off. Uh, and then I had a student, and uh, they can't hear me, and I'm, what the hell is going on? And, and uh, oh, yeah, that little light right there, it's off. Let me push that. So... Uh, one of the things a really good engineer will do will say first don't panic and take your time go through the steps is it plugged in is it turned on uh, are all the switches switched in the places they're supposed to be uh and if all else fails reboot and try again <laughs> reboot you know it's the 21st century version of our remember our fathers would go up to tv and say something wrong with this tv bang 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 on top and he goes hey picture's fine now there it is there it but is you're right. Most of the engineers, I love the fact that by and large, they must have to go to chill school. Yeah. Because I go, hi, um, all right, well, try switching out this. And is the, is the other channel muted? Okay, well, that did it. Thank you. You know what I mean? <laughs> And on you go. Ah! Meanwhile, you're like, ah. Yeah. Well, anyway. Uh, yes, sir. We seem to have gotten through that. So let's talk Tom Pinto. You know, Tom, I have known you a really, really long time. Uh, you're one of the first people I met uh, when I came to L.A. Uh, we have Samantha Paris in common. There and, you go. See, ex exactly. That's that, that was that connection. And I'm not sure what year it was. So if I would back in, when did you start doing promos for Disney? Uh, 1990 or early 91. Okay, so it was probably a few years before Well, that. actually, I, I didn't come to L.A. until 1990. It was uh, about uh, May, March or May of 1990 uh, I came to L.A. Uh, and uh, I'd been signed uh, by SBV. Right. Uh, wow, we're going way back in time, and this is kind of inside baseball, but um, Lee Gilbert who had been an agent at Sutton Barth and Venari, and I believe was a wonderful friend of Samantha Paris, uh, who you actually had been married to at one time, I believe. Yes, I was. And, and, but that's gone and been gone. You guys are still friends. Um, 
Samantha was having a workshop, and I took her two-day workshop with Lee Gilbert directing. And at mm-hmm. the end of it, Lee Gilbert said, you know, you're, you're pretty talented. If you ever decide to come to L.A., we'd like to represent you. Right, because that was before the time where they would say uh, out-of-town yes. talent. Yeah, right. Yeah, you'd have you got to come to L.A. Um, and I I put together a new demo, came down, and the rest is history. But um, I remember even when I was taking that workshop, when I was taking some private lessons with Samantha, she would talk about you. Oh yes, Tom Pinto, he's so great. He's this and he does this, and you know, I especially knew about. Uh, you had done some cartoons and your narration work. I didn't realize the extent of your promo work. Oh. And and just what an amazing talent you are. We don't always go to everybody's uh, website and listen uh, to the things they did, which I've done now. <laughs> you, you know, let's... Can I just say something? Don't feel too badly because my own mother, may she rest in peace. <laughs> I would say, uh, watch this, blah, 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 blah. It's going to be on t- tonight. The, the commercial is going to run right after this program because it's a special thing. And then she called me. I didn't hear you. What do you mean? <laughs> well, it was a guy talking about this and then, you know, that wasn't you. <laughs> so, you know, when your own mother doesn't know, you know, and because I'm more of a chameleon than one of those people where they go, oh, wow, there's George Del Hoyo. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I mean. You I always can, knew Don. You always, you always knew did, George. Yeah. Or always know George. <laughs> He's still with yeah. us. Yes. yes, um, yes we always know Joe Cipriano. Uh, and and I agree with you. You are a chameleon. I'm a bit of a chameleon, but I think you're more of a chameleon than I am. Uh, but it's a very solid, believable read. Um, there's a thing about you, your artistry, that enhances, is definitely heard, but doesn't take away uh, focus from the entire story. Uh, and that could sound like I'm saying, well, you know, you, you don't really hear you. That's not that's not what I'm saying. I, I, I'm, I'm saying what you do fits. It sits right there, and it is so a part of whatever promo commercial you're doing. Um, and it's varied enough that, uh, you know, you, you have that chameleon-like quality. Well, we have to, you, you know, you know, we have to adapt to the particular project that we have and, and like more in TV narration these days, which is, you know, one of my real passions now uh, is, I mean, it has been for a while, but when I'm coaching people, I'll say, you know, like using these hands and I'll say, you know what, the better the pictures, the less you have to do and vice versa. So we both know we've worked yeah. on projects where you know, you look at the copy and they say, well, this has got to be done in 30 seconds. And you look and it's overwritten and you've been around long enough to say, guess what? Here I go. And then you look at the other ones where they go, Dave, we want this moody this. And you go, oh, great. It's 20 Yes, years. I've got some oh, room for 30. I can and bring you, some artistry. Artistry. Exactly. You get to act. <laughs> yes. It's <laughs> probably why I'm guessing you know, because you, you hit you hit town, and 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 the promo stuff came through for you, and the trailer stuff came through, and then suddenly to get to work in the video games, it's like which I'm didn't sure exist so. when I got here. Okay, exactly. But it's like that some people say, well, "Wow, what'd you do before video games?" And it's like everything. Say, well, I got this VHS. Why don't you listen? To that? <laughs> You know what? I I do have a lot of my old work on various now defunct forms of uh, yeah. storage. Uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. But let's 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 talk about you. Um, okay. You, in so many ways, you came you came out of radio like I did. Uh, where'd, uh-huh. you, where'd you start? I, I started. Uh, let's see. Palm Springs. Then I went to uh, Thousand Oaks. 
which was a revolving door, but it was close to home. I mean, yeah. I could actually drive from my apartment in in Santa Monica. I was like, my God, I don't have to go all over the place, but it was just lousy. Back to Palm Springs, then to San Jose, because by then, D, I was... I was more of a production director and the fill-in guy or the Saturday morning guy. So I had enough of my, my, you know, my toes into it, but at the same time, you know, I wasn't. You didn't get all the bad habits of doing that radio thing like that. Plus, well, plus the fact, how about, how about the satiation on our ears? And by the way, I love the Bee Gees. I love the Bee Gees again, but during that time, I was like, oh, "Please, please, please, give me, give me something different." But yeah, you're right. So many of us came, especially from the promo industry, Mark Elliott, Bo Weaver. I mean, uh, ad nauseum, yeah. uh, or even the late Reg Cordic. You know, came out of what would you call it? Uh, he was like a staff announcer at a TV station yeah. before promos really came in so Ernie Anderson same thing he was a staff announcer for Channel 5 in Cleveland when I was a kid that's that's right and then God love Tim Conway who said oh. you know, I'm, I'm going to LA to do this show why don't you come out and I'll introduce you to Carol Burnett I mean what a what a, what a what a story on that but you know radio for me and I know you took workshops with Lee I then got into workshop with uh, two people. Uh, her name was Kiva Lawrence, who was like a theater woman who also had a nice voice, did soap opera stuff. And she really was the one who tapped me on the shoulder and said, Darla, it's okay to be an actor. And it was like, you know, she gave me so many morsels to kind of move forward in, in that area there. and. For me, it's just been a continuous journey, Dave, because, oh, yeah. you know, in terms of, you know, going, okay, you're no longer a young cartoon promo voice. Forget it. Okay. Oh, now, oh, guess, guess what? You're a news voice. Okay. So you're a news voice. Oh, by the way, we think you'd be good at serious narration. Oh, oh really? Okay. So uh, I've just tried to follow, and to be honest with you, what I think the industry wanted to give me and I'm not saying people can say well that's not very proactive I would agree with you but we both have had great agents yeah who were honest to say look this is going here this is going here what do you want to do and I've always been about the work you know I mean not just supporting my family but I like the work you know so it's uh, you it's know, work we would do for no money if money weren't a thing there you go there you yeah. go. So I I just have continued to evolve. And I think you're going to be, and I'm sorry if I'm rambling, but because you brought up radio, guess what I started doing in October? You went back to radio? Oh, my God. Close. You're devolving. <laughs> I am I am the image voice on Sirius XM's ah. class final. Well, that, that still fits with him. The voiceover world, uh, imaging is a big part of, of uh, what we do. It's one of the jobs that people are aspiring towards. And what, so again, bravo. So it's like, you know what? And I'm enjoying it because it's, you know, some of it is more near. I love it when, when they have special shows like about Led Zeppelin, the anniversary of an album. And so I get a chance to talk for like 20 seconds about an interview with Robert Plant or something like that. You know, it's not just going classic vinyl. You know, <laughs> which, you know, we we're both about the work. We'll take it, but that's so. I I, I got a question now. Yeah. You, you talked about uh, the actor that you studied with a little bit that gave you so many morsels. What was one of the morsels she gave you beyond it's okay to be an actor? It's funny. I mentioned this to someone um, a couple of weeks ago, and and I work mostly with TV narration people, but someone who's now she's she's came from, went from San Francisco to LA and she wanted me to review some auditions which I do because I think that's helpful for working pros oh, yeah, together absolutely. right absolutely. you know yeah absolutely so the read was so poignant and you could hear the tears in her voice halfway through and toward the end I mean yes this woman God love her was so connected to the material but you know what Kiva said to me one time when I was doing something she says, okay, if you want to get 
if, if you want to get sensitive, go, what would you think of? I said, I always think of my grandmother because how good she is to me and how always she's been good to me. And I did it and I was crying at the end. And Kiva again was so gentle. She said, that was lovely, darling. And I'd like you to do one more. And I would like your audience to have the opportunity to cry. Instead of having to pay attention to you crying. Yeah. yeah. Never forgot that, D. Yeah. Never, 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 ever forgot that. It's that's, just... that's such a great note. Um, you want to reflect some of what you want your listener to feel, but you don't want to overpower them with it. Right. And you know, it's a balance. Yeah. It, it's it's a balance. And, and sometimes when you're in a session, at least you can experiment with that. You can say, well, I'll give you a few. How would you like it? How am I doing? That's good. Go a little further. Go a little less. In the audition, though, of course, in this day of day and age of self-direction, it's a little bit of a crapshoot. So thank God when you have casting outfits like Elaine Craig and Sound and Fury who say, give two takes. And you know that maybe they're not going to submit both takes, but at least they're allowing you, they're giving you license to say, we will listen to 260s or we will listen to 230s. Well, and no. actually they... I have a love-hate relationship with that because sometimes I feel like, well, wait a minute, I can hear this this way, this way, this way, and this way. Uh, uh, my common sense tells me, d don't put four takes on there. Uh, oh, four, but, yeah. But, but, but some, sometimes uh, they only ask for one. And, and I'm always a little, well, you know what? This or this, I like both of these. Uh, what do I do? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo to, to send it in. Uh, but by the same token, I know how we are as actors. Oh, I want them to hear this, and I want them to hear this, and I want them to hear this, and we we, we have to make a choice. Let me ask you something. This is something that goes on with me, and Go I'm going to take some yeah. questions here. Uh, often when I'm doing auditions, I used to belabor them. I used to, you know, just nitpicky, nitpicky, nitpicky. Now pretty much... Uh, if I haven't got it by take three, uh, I'm probably not going to get it. Or, mm -hmm. or maybe all the things, take one, take two, take three, uh, there's, oh, I like the first half of that, the middle of that, and the end of that. But I don't spend that much time. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very rarely now going beyond three takes in an audition, and I tend to book as much or more than I ever did. Guess what? John Wasser, Atlas Talent, one of the one of the partners, told me one time in a conversation. I said, because you know he knows that I'm coaching people. I said, what has been your biggest gripe lately? He said, people are just killing the life out of the spot, and that comes from all those takes. Yeah. Because the law, Murphy's law, and it's not even Murphy's law, the law of diminishing returns. The more takes you do without breaking it up, without going outside and taking a significant break, you're without direction. You're probably not going to move off of that. So yeah. it just sucks the life out of it, the spontaneity. Um, uh, Mary Lynn Wister has talked about that too. She says, God, I'm hearing people click, cobble it together. Oh, and you know, some, some people are good editors, some people are not. Some people know to leave a little breath in there, knock it down as opposed to cut it out. I, I get it. But there's still a little bit, a lack of a spontaneity that I hate to sound like old farts, but if you walked into DPN or to SPV or CESD or whatever, you only have a limited amount of time. And so therefore, it was kind of great because you're in the lobby and you knew, okay, there's parking went in. Okay, so I'm going to be next. So you're like on deck, right? Yeah. What are we doing at home? We're sitting around, we got our coffee, checking our email and all that. And they go, no problem. Let me just hit record and see what happens. We're not as focused as we should be. We're not, D. We're not. I, I, and and it's, it's part of the change. Yeah. And, and it's like this change has allowed more and more people to do it. That's the good news. The bad news is, is that self-direction is so critical and and people are spending far too much time on the auditions because also if you put three or four auditions you know like 
four regular guys back to back to back, they're going to all sound the same because you're on that roll. You're on that roll. You've lost specificity. Yeah. So it was easier for you to go to, here we go, harp music, 1989, 1990. You go to the voice caster, you audition for Miller Lite. You go over to SBV, you read three pieces of copy. They were all different. You go have lunch. One o'clock, you have a session. Then they say, hey, get over to Elaine Craig's. You go do a dialogue at Elaine Craig's. And then they go, last minute thing, D, you have, a, you have an audition at Wood Holly for a trailer. So you've had a court, you've had time to settle into things and do something different. I water my roses. I feed my cat. I, um, uh, I will go through, I'll even do something as mind numbing as shredding because it doesn't <laughs> like that. Now, yeah. my, now, do you mean and, shredding paper or <laughs> I'm that good to shred. I'm a cord, I'm a cords man only, right. but like, for example, my, my mother, I loved her dearly, but I wouldn't call my mom before I was going to audition because she might piss me off and then that. But I just think that people are kind of like, I'm going to do another audition. And I'm going to do another audition. And I'm going to do another one. So I think, and you're right, I'm working smarter as well and yeah. not harder. My booking stuff is better than it was a few years ago when I decided, stay in your lane, Tom. Stay in your lane with gusto. I, and I don't mean to go on and on, but I say this to you because I think you'll understand it. I, I get this. You know, you get an audition. Hey, younger, cool, uh, hip, um, uh, either like um, excuse me, either like Common or Leslie Odom Jr. And I want to say, <laughs> to my, I want to say my legends, have you met me? Well, you know, it's, it, it's funny because uh, I get those auditions and I kind of feel the same way. I love Common. I love Leslie Odom Jr. But it's, it's, it's really kind of not me. I mean, I, I, I got the tone. But I don't know if I got the tone. Bless you for saying that because you're right. Specificity. Now it's, <laughs> it's different. It's different sometimes. I'll give you an example. If I see Sterling, I'm sorry. Help me, Sterling K. Brown. Oh, okay. Oh, if, yeah. I, see, if I see his name, there's something that just says to me, he's just got this chill and respect and understatement i mean it's beyond but it's very classy at the same time it is and he's like one of one of my favorites that i love to when i can you know steal from but there are such specific things like hi young guy blah da, 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 da. you know even you know he he's a you know he's a loser who works at a at a record store and i go no that ship has yeah. sailed yeah yeah so, yeah, there's certain certain ages of uh, you know I just can't do anymore. I wanna I wanna uh, I hit a question here from uh, somebody. Oh, that, sure. uh, right. Terry Briscoe, uh, Tom. After being in so many areas of VO, what would you say your favorite genre would be, and do you consider your favorite to be what you are best at? Oh damn you, son of a gun! That's a great <laughs> question. Um, I'm gonna say right now, it is both. I, my favorite genre is TV narration, and I think that's where I'm shining the most because at my stage in my life, Terry, people are willing to listen to an older guy talk about history or science or something because it's, oh, 25 year olds say, oh, well, he's wise. He's wise. I'll listen to him to talk to me about the AIDS crisis, you know, whatever. So I'm also better at a, as a narrator, and maybe you don't want to know this, but about seven years ago, I started writing again, and I have more respect for writers. For yes, and I look at it, I don't just say, oh, bullshit. Oh, look at this guy. Who wrote this crap, you know? Yeah. Huh. I started shades, saying, Wait a minute. shades of Ernie Anderson there. Exactly. I said, maybe there's a period there for a reason. Maybe that's a run-on sentence for a reason. So uh, that's my favorite right now because it's sort of my candy store, Terry. Promos, sure, I make more money doing 10 to 15 seconds. I do mostly news stuff. I do some entertainment, you know, when they need something special. 
but uh, but that's my favorite thing right now. You know, for some people, it's animation or video games. Not my jam. You know I mean, what? I I love doing video games. They didn't exist uh, when I got into this into this business, and when they started, I just thought of them as another form of animation. Uh, but I I still do animation, but I book a lot more video games uh, than I do cartoons. Um, and one of the things I've discovered about you, you're you're kind of the same kind of voiceover pro that I am. You do some of everything. Uh, you you have yeah. you have made an impact in cartoons. You've made an impact in commercials. You've made an impact in TV promos. Uh, you uh, and and you're still doing all those things. Per, I, maybe not cartoons just at the moment. Uh, last last cartoon I did was looping some lines of Ed Harris on Cars 2 or Cars 3. I don't even okay, know. Okay, okay. But anyway, um, go ahead. But Sorry. you were a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. You know oh. what? I was I, I was a uh, an ancillary voice of a recurring character, which was fun because, you know, those guys just have such a great time. And then Rob Paulson, you know, was playing – celebrity hockey in Ottawa and there wasn't an ISDN thing. And so um, Susan Blue said, cause I was there doing, I, I don't know what it was, a uh, Dask, that was the character I did, some punk rocker from out of space. And so- <laughs> Typecasting. Said, uh, who, yeah, right. Who, you know, who would wanna blah, blah, blah. And Townsend was already doing James Avery's voice cause James Avery was so busy doing Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I got a cartoon. Um, I became the uh, Dick Scott, the manager of New Kids on the Block and the New Kids on the Block cartoon because James Avery went and took that job and wasn't available. There you go, man. Thank you, James. God Thank bless you, James. buddy. Yeah. But it was one of those things where uh, I said, you know, well, I kind of do a little Rob Possum thing. You know, I got that kind of Michigan thing. I, hey. There's a legendary Tom Pinto because he would always say that when he would see me. God love him. <laughs> and so they said, yeah, why don't you read his lines? And then I get a call from SBV say, guess what? They're going to use your lines. <laughs> and I do one more show and then Rod came back. And I've always been a little embarrassed by it. You always felt but, like, uh, I wasn't trying to steal your job, honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then on top of it, some... There are a lot of fans overseas. It goes, Tom Pinto, I think this is you doing Raphael. And sure enough, pulled it up. And look, I go, God, I've never even seen that episode or heard that episode. So. You know, the fans are amazing. Uh, they get so deep into it. They know who's who and what's what. They remember things about performances you did and uh, projects you worked on that you don't remember. I really think, yeah, and I really think that video games, it's even more of a, there, there, there is this passion that even more so than cartoons. Yeah. So, uh, um, Jay Horace Black here. Hey, Tom. Uh, yes, the audition overthinking can be a challenge for us all. In the VO genres uh, that you work with daily, do you have the same process or steps to approach, uh, perform all copy? Uh, could you speak more to specificity? Another great question. The answer is you do need to have. I don't do more than uh, two things back to back in the same genre because I want to make sure that they're specific. But uh, I, ha I have an affiliate that I've been doing out of San Francisco since 1994. So I know that if I do that affiliate stuff, Jay, and I'm saying, you know, tonight, menace, you know, uh, was a virus, you know, you know, um, whatever the news happened to be racing, racing, racing thing going viral, blah, 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 what police are trying to do. If I then suddenly to have an audition from sound and fury says, low key, regular guy, da, 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 no announcers, no VO people, you know, no commercial, no that, then I'm screwed. So I like to also look at different body language. I try to say some things will be better for me standing, some things will better be better uh, with me sitting, 
I also believe firmly in different gesticulations for different characters. You know, there's so, so many people that they've been taught to use their hands and they start, and this is what they're doing on every single thing. And you go, well, you know. You know, it, it, it's funny because uh, the hand thing, uh, it's one of, when I have a student on Zoom, you know, like, no, your camera's got to be on. I got to see you. Uh, because I can tell so much about why a read is working or not working based on what the hands are doing. And when we're doing promos, it's almost like you're conducting like a, a conductor in an orchestra. Um, when you're doing commercials, it's a little different thing. Hopefully, um, your hands may be conducting, but more uh, uh, reflecting what you're saying. In Just cartoons and video <laughs> games, yeah. Your body better be doing what your character is doing. Uh, so it's not just your hands, but, you know, that look up, that scratching your chin, those kinds of things uh, make a huge difference. And once again, uh, while I was waiting for you, I think that was while you I was mentioning. Oh, yes, it was. I was mentioning I'm going to be in London teaching uh, uh, at the end of next week. And uh, one of my friends there, Mark Esdale, uh, who I quote all the time, he said, this is the exhaust of the acting engine. What happened? What are you thinking? What are you feeling? What are you doing? Who are you talking to? Um, and then it it will all come out there if you do if you pay attention to those things. I love new analogies. And, and, on, and you know, on, no, abs absolutely, because it's a different way to express to a student. And I say student, anybody who's learning. Okay, I'm still a student of writing, as people. Pick at, pick at what I write. But I think what you were talking about in terms of the, the, the body stuff, I'll never forget being at a session or a cartoon session early on. It was a show called Paw Paw Bears. Oh. My character was supposed to jump off the cliff and it was with, who was I jumping off the cliff with? Um, Susan Blue, right? Ah. All right. And it was like, I watched, she was sitting next to me and I watched her and her feet were doing this. And I'm saying, okay, it's really okay. I mean, I'm Italian, nobody has to tell me to gesture, but it was <laughs> like you said, when have you fallen off of a cliff? In my life, I've never have, but to, to capture that experience, you're right, your body is going to need to do that. So I do believe that different uh, things, I will also, um, Jay, just give you one more thing. When I narrate, half the time, I have my fist. I, I have Rodan, like the statue. And if I gesture, maybe it's one finger. But it keeps me minimized because I'm a rather um, energetic guy to begin with. And so for me to tone myself down, I have to do that. You know, some people say, well, wow, are you a little concerned about your breathing? Well, you know what? No one's concerned about breathing anymore because they don't need people sounding like this when they're narrating anymore. They yeah. want people to look at actors. We should really, instead of, instead of, you know, bad mouthing actors for taking the work, actors have really opened up a, uh, a door for us to be more natural and not worry about what we sound well, like. Well, not only that, uh, well, you know, I still have a little bit of pissed off that they're doing so many commercials, but in, in, <laughs> In cartoons, animated movies and whatnot, those movies wouldn't get made uh, if the stars didn't take the roles. And I've been in, had small parts in enough of those movies uh, that paid me scale and residuals and I'm still getting checks for that, you yeah. know, thumbs up. I'm glad they're making the movies. Thank you for the opportunities. Um, uh, another quick question from Jay. Oh, uh, and do you use the 416 condenser? Uh, what is your mic chain? Yeah, 416 because I'm not really great with mic technique and the 416 has always been very, very uh, uh, forgiving to me. I know that some people say, wow, but you sound so good on a Neumann. Yeah, but I go and I get all that stuff. So I'm sorry, I'm just not that good using it. Um, when you mean the chain, I'll just say very simple. I'm just going through a Scarlet 212 type of thing. And um, I don't pre-cook it other than that. 
I might do a little bit on the back end, mild compression, mild noise gate, mild EQ to compensate for the acoustics in my room, which I think are pretty good, but they're not as good as maybe somebody else's. You know, George Whittem says, oh, Tom, you got some floor rumble. Well, you know, there's those engineers and their ears. And, they, and God bless them. Yeah. God bless them. But, uh, but, you know, I don't know, Jay, depends on what you do. I think for men, I'll just say that a 416 is most of the time what they're asking for, except I know when Dave, you because you do video games, some of these auditions say, we're not, you know, we're okay with the 416. When I'm in my own home studio, I'm using the 416 unless they specifically <laughs> ask for something else. <laughs> 95% oh. of the and I got a, I got a a, a, a mic locker. Uh, uh but that uh, 460 I I have always come back to it. Yeah. Yeah, well 416 be good to you, right? Yeah. Be very very yeah. good been very very good to me. Very good to you. Uh let's see. Jim Frank, do I need to be in LA to be successful in video games and animation? I think some of that is you know Dave probably can answer that better than from but from my point of view right now and i don't audition for a lot of video games partly because of a time factor partly because they're asking for multiple voices in an area that i'm not totally comfortable like when i audition for a video game it's usually the old the wise shaman or the voice of the ether type of thing and, and it's not a a long long role but i i will say this dave and i are both getting a ton of auditions and we aren't i'm not in la i'm doing i'm doing it from my home studio and animation is opening up a little bit more but there is something yeah and animation and animation still they they i think the pandemic changed the game uh because they couldn't get you they right. and they wanted productions to continue they had to use your home studios and uh, they learned that, wow, a lot of people have really good home studios. So I'm always asked now, would you prefer to do it from your house or the studio? And more often than not, I want to stay home. I'll have a student or something and some other things backed up that I want to do. Uh, but but if you, I've got are also, you are also an experienced pro. Yeah, yeah. And I've had a home studio know, for 20-something years. Right. And you're a known entity. So I would say to somebody newer, I'm not saying move to LA, but if for some reason you live in, I'll just say Tucson, and you book the cartoon, you have an agent and somehow you get, you know, and you book the cartoon, go in for the first session. Go into town for the first session. Press the flesh. Let them see that you're a human being and all, all that stuff. And They'll actually love it the next time they work with you. You'll hear it in their voice that they know you a little bit more. Um, and I still do that, not so much on animation, but, but on a commercial game. If it's a new client, I think, wow, it would be nice to have repeat business. I'll, my, my daughter lives in L.A. I'll drive down there, do the session, and then have dinner with Molly and, you know, and then, you know, and then spend the night and then get up in the morning and drive back north. Okay, I got a, a long question here. Right. Wow. Uh, I mean, that's covering your face. Nobody can see you right now. Uh, uh -huh. Andrea, Tom, recently I've had the good fortune to have some private VO coaching sessions with Mary Lynn Wisner. In fact, I was signed up for the SF Roadshow before it was canceled. I'm getting ready to make my commercial demo, and I'm thinking of making it with Mary Lynn, uh, but I'm concerned as she is in LA and I am in San Jose, I would not be able to go to LA to make the demo. Since you mentioned San Jose, and I believe you sometimes guest teach in San Francisco, I'm wondering if you would recommend anyone in the Bay Area to produce a great commercial demo. Unfortunately, I don't know of a lot of local Bay Area demo producers. Um, Samantha Paris produces a lot of demos, but they're for her, you know, yeah. people that have been through their program and then they have to wait until she's ready and, and all that stuff. So, so I get it. Um, I know Mary Lynn very well. I also know that she can direct you via Zoom just as capably if she were there in person. 
and uh, I know that she works with a couple of different, uh, what would you call it? producer mixers? I know yeah. she works with John Graham, but she also works with, and I it escapes me, and I'm terrible, but someone else that she's using. Um, I wouldn't let that hold you back. Yeah. I really wouldn't let that hold you back. I, I, would, I would also uh, thumbs up on that advice. Um, if your home studio is decent enough that you can record nice, clean tracks, mm -hmm. uh, there's no reason why you couldn't be directed from afar by Mary Lynn. Uh, and I yeah. think she's good enough at what she does. Uh, yeah. She's at the top of the game. Uh, for commercial demos, so I, yeah. I, I understand I, her question. I understand yeah, her question, yeah. but um, I know that there are some people in the Bay Area who have gone through the Voice Tracks program, or who aren't in the Voice Tracks program, who have used other producers. I just don't know their names, and I just think uh, you know want to know something. If you become a member of the Gardner Street, the Gardner Collective, Collective yeah. Yeah, and say, hey, tell, ask the question that you asked me. You would be surprised the source, the people, the, the names of people that you might get. Yeah. And it won't cost you a cent yeah. to join the Gardner Collective. Yeah, and there you know, are people that I recommend all the time, and I know mm. there's some other people out there that I don't know, that I don't have a, a knowledge of what they've been doing that are very good. I know uh, Jordan Reynolds is a... Uh, a younger guy who uh, I became aware of him and what he does, and it's like, oh yeah. Now I also send people to him, right? Got but he's in, he, but he's in L.A. He's so, in LA. yeah, true, true. Yeah, one of those things. But uh, I, I wouldn't let her hold her back. Okay. Got a question from Tina Smith. Tom, where are you from? I know it's a random question, but I'm a Northern California girl, and I hear a different sound in your accent. I'm a bit of a dialect nerd. Well, I, I'm not a NorCal native. I I am an Angelino. I was born. I actually am not afraid to cop to the fact that I was born in Van Nuys. Yes, plain old Van Nuys. In the hinterland of Van Nuys. Yeah, exactly. It's the only city. Van Nuys has been broken into so many boroughs now because nobody wants to say they live in Van Nuys. There's, <laughs> there's Valley Glen, there's Sherman Glen, there's uh, there's uh, Lake Balboa, there's West Van Nuys, but the only Van Nuys is right next to the police station. All right, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be flippant about that. <laughs> um, I am an LA native with a lot of family, though. My dad's family here, her, and his five siblings they all came from Lawrence, Long Island. Okay, Long so, Island. But yeah, I don't you, hear the Long Island in you either. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying that the longer you talk, you know, the longer one talks, the more, I guess what I'm going to say, it's sort of California Italian. California Italian English that people say that I have. And I'm fine. Cal Italian. Uh, Cal Italian. Anyway. I uh, got another one here, Jeremy Adams. Oh, nice microphone there. I like the picture. I'm in L.A. and I'm working toward the funds for an animation and gaming demos. Uh, in the meantime, is there something I can do to gain experience before I have them ready? I'm trying to save money. Unfortunately, there's only so many professional coaches coaching sessions I can do. Good question. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what seems to be happening, and this is uh, unfortunate because. Sometimes we can be lucky enough to find a support group, a workout group of people who are interested in the same things as you and are on your caliber, but there's also another factor. Not just how good of a director they are, but what their personalities are like. Sometimes there's jealousy, sometimes there's, you know, don't direct me, you know, that type of thing, or why did you direct me that way? I used to even try to tell people, if you're gonna have a workout group, you need to have exercises that say, we're going to mock an audition. We're going to mock a session. And that gets people in a position of, okay, I have to be answerable to you. But sometimes when you're working in somebody's living room or you're working on Zoom, you're doing things with people, we get a little comfortable. That's the good news. The bad news is we get a little too comfortable. <laughs> so that's one way to maybe keep the cost of that down. But the other thing would be, 
Mary Lynn Wisner does have, you know, the, those VO Pro nights. So maybe say, and that's only like a hundred bucks or something yeah. like that. Cool. Save your save your money for those special nights to work with. And and she oh, has yeah. them. Uh, Portia. Um, oh God, what's her last name? I, I'm, yeah, Portia Scott. Yes, has mm-hmm. them. Uh, uh, I mentioned Terry Berlin. There are a number of casting directors that do that, that will have a night uh, or even a weekend where uh, you're getting you're getting direction. You're also getting to uh, benefit from the successes and challenges of other people, the notes that they're getting without you being yeah. on the line. Uh, and I, I want to hitchhike again off of what you talked about, uh, creating, having, joining a uh, voiceover workout group. It's one of the things I did uh, after a few months in L.A., uh, and I was very selective. You know, I talked to one or two people, and they talked to one or two people, and we found uh, a group of people w- that we could be um, support one another. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one of the things I discovered that was – I wasn't expecting. I was expecting. Well, let me have somebody that can hear me uh, and 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 coach me, uh, critique my reads, help help me get better. I'm doing the same thing. But the first fifteen or twenty minutes before we got started, uh, the ability to talk to a group of people that are on the same path that you are on uh, about your successes, your challenges, your fears. Uh, that understand because your mama and your daddy and your sister and brother and the person you love they, they don't, don't. That's they right. don't so excellent point i mean because because that community aspect sometimes you learn that some you know there are certain agents that are oh so and so left that agency they're going over here or um you know what i heard of a non-union casting opportunity that yeah. the and it'd be like a month's worth of work, you know. It doesn't pay a ton, but it pays enough, you know. And you can do it on your own. So and, but and yes. set and set some ground rules of and the kinds of ground, things yes. how you are going to communicate with one another. That's great, man. Uh, nice mantra to have. Yeah. And of course, uh, Michael Sessoms. Any workout groups you would recommend? And Michael, you are in Texas. We don't know any groups in Texas. You might have to start your own. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, there's a woman on Facebook, bowl, bowl full of energy, Susan Ju- Bernard. Oh, Susan Bernard. Yeah, absolutely. And Julie she Shields. Pop- she, I think and Julie's Susan here now. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, did she, she move to LA? I, you okay. know what? I can't keep track. I know. I, <laughs> I get it. But... That might be uh, something to recommend. Now, it also depends on what your area of, not just expertise, but your your the area, area of you're voiceover. Growing. Yeah. 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 So, uh, but Susan Bernard is sort of she's a real not a party girl. I'm just saying she brings people together. She, she's a lot. She has a lot of energy. She's a great contact. <laughs> yes. yes, she does. You're right. <laughs> You're right, Dave. He does have a lot of energy, so you have to kind of look at your watch. But but I but <laughs> he loves helping people, so maybe, maybe maybe that will help. In in terms of now, that's in person. In terms of online, again, I would recommend going to the Gardner Collective. Not that they know all be all, but I think you might get thirty responses, and if six, if if the majority or the plurality keep saying yes. K best and maybe K best is a good fit for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh well we're running out of time. Let's get some questions. Uh J Horse Black, Tom, do you coach? And I I know you do. And I'm just gonna say before you answer that that uh and we've had this conversation. Um I have told people publicly that when I can and have some time, I will take coaching uh, from some of my friends in this business uh, because I want to stay sharp. I want to uh, avoid or get rid of bad habits. Uh, sometimes you, you've you gotten into a rut and a grind. Uh, and at VO Atlanta, we were, t- actually it was before VO Atlanta, and I said, hey, you know, I want to I wanna take some coaching with you. Uh, and I'm saying that publicly for a reason uh, because I want people to understand uh, that just like if you're a doctor or whatever, 
it's it's ongoing education. Yes. Uh, every great athlete has a coach. Uh, and sometimes, even though we've been doing this 20, 30 years, we need a tune-up. Uh, never let your ego be so big you don't think somebody can help you uh, continue to be good and, and even better. You're, you're absolutely right. And I know that uh, before the pandemic, when I would go to L.A., I would go over to Talk Shop LA with Martha Mayakis. Ah. I would I would do my auditions, you know, because it was like, you know, 15 bucks for 15 minutes. But then you know what I would say? You got time for a private later? Yeah, after lunch. And I go, great, I'll come back, you know? And it's always good to have somebody push your buttons again because yes. you don't get that, uh, get it that often. And, uh, to stay to stay sharp, uh, David Lyerly, who had been one of the assistant agents at at Atlas, but then went off on his own, you know. And I was kind of like, oh, you know, and I'm feeling like my promo reads, you know, I do so much of this stuff, and I want to make sure I'm better on the dramatic stuff. And Wasser said, well, you should work with Lyerly, and it was great because his idea of coaching is so far different from mine. So it forced me to be putty in his hands to pick up a different, you know, this is the new methodology, the new way of looking at it. Uh, and like you said, sometimes we just, like like a trainer, you go to the trainer, the trainer says, well, you know what, we have to change your workout because your body's acclimated. Yeah. So um, anyway, I do coach. I mostly coach, seriously, TV narration. I do a limited number of sessions every month. My priority is to take care of the people who are signed with agents who will get that kind of copy or if Mary Lynn or Jeff Howe or Dave Fenoy says, I've been working with a guy, you know, or a gal on this, I'll go from there. And then the next tier is when I work with somebody in a workshop, like one of Mary Lynn's workshop or J. Michael Collins. And so I've had a chance to get a sense of what their personality is like and whether or not they're willing to do the hard work yeah. to do. This. So the, that's a long winded way of saying, yes, you can go to my website, my email address is there, and then you can reach out to me if you care to follow up to get details and all that. He makes it harder than I do. <laughs> I went to his website. Oh, let me sign. What, what, what do I sign? Do I... Tom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you oh. know, I, yeah, I do it. I do all the, I do all the, I hate to say it. I do all the calendar work myself because it's not that I'm a control freak. I just, Maybe I'm just not bright enough to use things. Wait a minute. Was that was that Nadia Marshall that uh, I just yeah, saw? Yeah, I'm going to put it up. I wanted to let you, let you be able to finish what yeah. you were saying. And then Nadia Marshall, what was the most challenging narration you have ever done? What made it challenging? Uh, smart talent who asks a smart question. This woman, I don't want to embarrass her, but she's an up-and-comer. She is an up-and-comer. I don't think um, saying that will embarrass her. <laughs> okay. Nadia... The most challenging narration I ever had, ironically, was one that I didn't think was going to be. Because when I auditioned for it, it had to do with World War II. Um, I have great respect for the greatest generation. Sorry, I just am. My father was a paratrooper. And so all, the, all that stuff, okay. So I was, I, you know, when I booked it, I wasn't surprised, you know. I think, well, yeah, straightforward, authoritative, blah, 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 blah. I don't usually run long. But what happened was, is that every time I would do something, go, oh, that was good, but um, we need to shave a second and a half, okay? And I felt like I was fighting the clock. I felt like, you know, and so, -da -da -da, -da -da -da, -da 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 -da. and so I would ask for a couple more takes so I could kind of soothe it out, and they didn't feel like cutting copy. Now, when I've heard it, when I've heard some of the episodes, it's not as bad as what I thought. But it was challenging, and I was this far from thinking after the third episode that they might cut me loose, but they didn't. <laughs> so there you go. That was, that was uh, a couple <laughs> lessons there. One that often we think we're moving too fast, uh, and more often than not, we're belaboring the copy. Uh, and two, um, we all have some insecurities. I uh, got a quick question here because we're running out of time. Oh, it's 7 o'clock. Wait. A yes. uh, quick question for Tom. What's the biggest difference in your approach from narration and commercials? Very simple. 
You, you ready for this? It, it sounds ridiculously simple, but it is. Narration. They want to hear us. Nobody's doing this. Click, click, you know, mute, like my wife. <laughs> I go, stop. I, I want to see. I read for that commercial. I want to see what they did. Okay? So, my thing is, I understand that no matter how low-key, real person, whatever it is, the message still has to get through. And that's when I talk to producers when I've done a commercial, and I'll ask questions about them, saying, look, I know I'm an older town, I'm more of a traditional town or whatever. Tell me what your biggest thing is. And they say is getting the younger, fresher voices with the real person reads, but to still have the message there and not just throw it all away. So, but with narration, I can generally take more time. I can underline words, not because I'm an announcer, but because you probably should know. You probably should know that. However, it was, it was Wilkes Booth's brother who was the mastermind behind the assassination. Ah, I call it the butt factor. You know that Lincoln was killed. But did you know that really Will, Will, uh, John Wilkes Booth's brother was was Paul mastermind? Harvey. Paul, here's the rest <laughs> of the story. The rest of the story, yeah, I know. You know, and know. There, there are people under forty that are right over their heads, but that's all right. Yeah, <laughs> but we 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 do remember that, uh, and uh, it's you know, he was an institution. For, yeah, that for he a, was. Uh, love him or hate him. Um, didn't always agree with him. Didn't always like his commentary. No, but he, you're right. he was an he was an artist and a master at what he did. Yeah, and he, at least he was fairly. How do I put it? He was fairly straightforward. He wasn't. Uh, I said I don't want to get political here, but he wasn't like modern day Rush Limbaugh. You know, no, nothing no, like no, that. No, he no, was. No, no. You know. Anyway, he was really the heartland of America. I'm sorry, I'm, 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 you're running over because of me. I, did, I didn't well, mean to do you, that. You know what, no, uh, we're running over because it's so good and there's so much great information and uh, and I'm having a good time and other I think- I, Are there other questions that you want to put up there? I'm sorry. Uh, real quick, we'll, uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, Terry Briscoe, will I see you? Uh, Dave, will I see you at Mavo? Well, no, I'm not gonna be there this year. Uh, I was the keynote speaker at the first one, however. Uh, but I, I will not be there this year, and I thought that was for both of us. Uh, so if you're going to be right. in Mavo, <laughs> you can mention it. Um, oh, no, but I am going to be in New York with Scott Parkin, Marilyn Wisner, and just announced Jeff Howell. Oh, boy. For the for the New York Roadshow on Saturday, September 17th. Fantastic. And uh, I, I, I tell you, you can't find uh, a better group of coaches uh, someplace. So uh, if you're going to be in New York or, uh, you know, catch up with the, the Roadshow. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's... That'll be great. That'll be great. Well, I'm going to let you go because I got dinner waiting upstairs. And Tom, Dude, this is this has been a gas, uh, man. So good, so good to catch up with you. You know, I mean, let's just say something. You've been doing this a long time, and you don't get away with longevity and voiceover without doing it right. And you've got the new, the added layers to your career in terms of the video games, and you're you're giving back to the community some solid knowledge, and uh, I'm just glad you're part of the, the, the coaching community, too. Well, Tom, thank you. You know, I, I resisted it for a long time, uh, but I finally decided to take it serious. My late mother, who was a teacher, always said, well, son, you should teach. You should teach. And I was uh -huh. like, I, don't, I am not teaching. You, you, you got to grade papers and blah, 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 blah. And now that now that I've been doing it for a while, I absolutely love it. Uh, so, mom, mom, you were right. You know what? Isn't it great that mothers they 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 tell us certain things, and you know we're going, "What are you talking about?" And then later on, you can go, "Hey, thank you very much." I have a quick question, a personal note. Isn't your wife a doctor? Uh, no. Um, she is a social uh, 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 she um, uh, social worker, and uh, right now she is a behavioral specialist with autistic kids. Damn near a doctor. <laughs> well, want to know something? I'm so sorry. I do remember that, and thank her for doing the work because 
I have twin nephews. I am godfather to one of them. They're both on the spectrum. They're both almost 14. And, you know, in Pennsylvania, they give so much. That the government gives so much, so many um, resources to people. And, and I know we live in California, great state. So anyway, but bless her for the hard work that she does, okay? Yeah, it, um, it's, it's challenging. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But I do have a yeah. bunch of doctors in the family. Our middle daughter is a doctor. My sister's uh-huh. a doctor. My niece is a doctor. My father was a doctor. I'm kind of the black sheep of the family because I'm in this business. <laughs> You've got to. You, they, they've got to have somebody in the family to say, oh, he sits out by the pool and then he opens up his residual checks. <laughs> Something like that. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, I know. I know. It'll never change. Anyway, Thank you, my man. Thank you, Tom. I'm gonna let you go. Um, and when I get back I from when for, I get from for, back from Europe, we'll we'll set something up there. Please do. All right. Please do. All right, ladies man. and Take gentlemen, care. Mr. Tom Pinto, uh, one of the best in the business. Uh, he does it all, uh, and it was just a pleasure to talk to him. Quite, quite, quite the gentleman. Just a great, great, great guy. So I'm going to let you go because I got to go because dinner is waiting upstairs. Uh, I will not be here next week because I'll be in Europe. Uh, But uh, what's the 10th, uh, the 11th, uh, I think it's the 11th or 12th of of May. I'll be back and we'll be back and we'll be doing Ask Dave Fenoy Anything again. These live on my YouTube channel, Dave Fenoy Voiceover Training. Uh, if you want to book some time, uh, not between the 30th and the 10th, uh, DaveFanoy.com, click on the Study VO tab. And in the meantime and in between time, book something.